Aloha and welcome to the Carol Cox Show. Thank you. I'm your host, and we will have a bittersweet news discussion today. Uh, I want to share with you uh, what you saw in the opening scenes where actually leachate draining from refuse trucks or trash trucks, as some of us call them, or garbage trucks. And did you know, and maybe you did or maybe you didn't, that these trucks, when they're hauling trash, they're also hauling what we call leachate. And leachate basically, as you saw the definition on the screen there, and then to sum it up for you, make it short, it's when water, in this situation, water comes in contact with municipal solid waste or trash. And this trash, then everything that's inside of the trash is contact with the water. And then that then leaches out the constituents of chemicals or dye or whatever, salt or whatever is involved in there. It will leach a portion of that out, making that water or that liquid material now a concern and harmful to the environment. So you wouldn't want to introduce it to the lakes, the rivers, the streams, the street, because what happens if you're driving along and you see your windshield, when the next time you're following a garbage truck, just look at the windshield and uh, see if you see any little spray. If you see spray and it's not raining, then you can pretty much bet you've got yourself a dose of leachate. And one of the concerns, or several concerns there are, but we'll just discuss them loosely, and that is the leachate that drains on the roads lie dormant, basically, and a lot of it can be bacteria. Because in household goods, a municipal solid waste is consisting and composed of many of things, rat poisons, chemicals, fertilizers, shampoo, oils, old juice, stale juice, milk, you name it. Chemicals, bug spray, fertilizers, the gambit. So all of this uh, becomes contacts with the trash. And when we see it on the roads, it dries up. The sun bakes it and it, it does not disappear it just dries up and becomes dust. So when the cars are driving along and you're sitting in traffic, the cars are pushing up the dust and you're breathing that through your ventilator or your vents in your car or your air conditioner. So it just depends. And so we uh, are concerned now with this practice of leachate. And one of the things we found was that the state and the city and county of Honolulu are being very casual about it and really not placing the health of the environment and the health of the people uh, of higher concerns. What they're doing basically is skirting the issue and we'll describe that. And many of these scenes that you will see throughout the thing were actually taken at the Kehi transfer station there at Middle Street and D Dilling Dillingham and you'll also see a number of trucks that we took pictures of going in and out of the H power plant at uh, Kalai or Barbara's Point. Now, when a truck is loaded, it is supposed to be sealed. And I'm just going to go through. We filed a complaint on uh, December 7th with the state health department about this saying that we believe that there's some very serious ecological impacts that have been allowed and tolerated for too, much too long. And that is, uh, there is also at the KE transfer station, owned by the city and county of Honolulu, where all the trash from the main Honolulu district and some surrounding areas are brought there and then placed in a tractor trailer truck and then ship to H power for burning or landfill for disposal or burying. So what about the leachate? I want you to understand something when I make this statement that we believe that the state health department solid and hazardous waste, clean water branch, wastewater branch have been a bit too casual and too cozy with the city and county of Honolulu. And I think you will agree by the time we finish this discussion. 
And that is, you see, when I found all of this out, I actually filed a complaint, as I said, in December 1st, uh, December 7th of this year with the solid waste branch and the clean water branch, basically saying that we believe that the city and county of Honolulu, based on the findings that we have and the information and the information we've gotten from city employees and private haulers to share with us and give us an insight that there is something egregious or some hanky-panky going on. And I'll lay that out for you. This, I have a document here. Now, October 27, 2006, this document was produced by Mr. Frank Doyle. And Mr. Frank Doyle was a chief of the refuse division in the city and county of Honolulu in 2006. So basically, he's writing the private haulers, and he's saying leaking vehicles and containers. So it's establishing what we as citizens might draw the wrong conclusion that there is a great importance to this or some concern that we're exaggerating. You know how we usually are because we're not, quote, the experts. But we are experts at knowing when we're breathing dust and dirt and filth and, and exposed to bacteria. We are experts at that. We know what's wrong and what's right. So this uh, subject was leaking vehicles in containers. We have received several reports of vehicles and or containers leaking liquids either at the location where the rubbish was collected or while being transported. In accordance with the revised ordinance of Honolulu section 9.2.3 section a, subsection A1 all vehicles used by the licensee for collection of refuse shall be so designed and constructed as to prevent the spilling or scattering of its contents upon the public streets there you have it this is sent out by Frank Doyle at the time was a chief uh, engineer for the environmental services division now, they go further now. This was to the private haulers, and they admonished them that you could be fined if you don't take care of this, if you do not stop uh, disposing or discharging liquids onto the streets, or if you have a leaking truck and you spill it onto the streets. You could get cited, and we'll talk about that later. Now, we found that document as well as another document produced by the city and county of Honolulu, and that one is put out by the Department of Environmental Services Refuse Division, Leachate Management Procedure. Now, basically, it's telling city workers what it is you need to do with a leaking truck. So all of their trucks, in theory, is to be in compliance like they've already admonished the private haulers was to make sure that their trucks did not leak and if they were to leak there was a procedure that was to be followed and that procedure was to take as it states here potential sources of leachate the facilities are managed to eliminate or minimize the generation of leachate during normal conditions However, there is a potential for leachate to be generated under certain typical conditions. However, there is the potential for leachate to be generated. And for example, during and after heavy rainfall events, deliveries of MSW to the facilities may have more moisture than usual than under typically drier conditions. Under these atypical conditions, there is potential for leachate to be generated at the following locations. Tipping floor, inside the pit, from the compactors to uh, KH transfer station, from a leaking tra trailer, from a leaking roll-off container at Kapa'a. So the city is letting its workers know where to look out for leachate that it is a concern and that we don't want to generate it. And so, and they also go further to offer how to mitigate it to prevent it. The following mitigation methods have been identified as appropriate for leachate management. 
for leaking trailers. The driver is directed to take it into the truck wash facility, if available, which is equipped to collect and treat potentially contaminated truck washing liquids. The trailer remains in the truck wash facility until it, a leak is no longer detected. If a truck was wash facility is not available, the trailer is to be parked and the leachate collected in a container, then absorbed. That's the city's procedure. Now, the city and county of Honolulu, the basic law, revised ordinance of Honolulu, is very clear. Every license under the article, this article shall be subject to the following conditions. All vehicles used by licensee for the collection of refuse shall be designed and constructed as to prevent the spilling of or scattering of its contents upon public streets. That's a city ordinance. It's a law. So no playing around. Now, the state health department also, who manages and looks out for our environment in theory, went further and they issue what we call a solid waste management permit. Now, the solid waste management permit is issued and in turn, it has conditions and specific to Kapa'a, to Kehe Transfer Station, Kawailoa, and, and convenience centers, some of you might or go to occasionally to deposit trash. Now, listen what the state says. The annual operations shall include the following information and the annual operations permit and report that from a solid waste permit issued by the state. It states that this is what the city and county of Honolulu must, and mandatory, they must record and report these things. Quantities of solid waste received by type including destination or for disposal. Quantities in gallons of liquid waste or leachate generated and method of management disposal. Quantities of material recycled from the waste by type and destination. Now, there's where things get a little concerned and a little confused. And why we earlier stated that there is, it's just too cozy. You see, the state knows that it is impossible to handle municipal solid waste without having some leachate generated, just the nature of the beast, just the makeup of solid waste trash or municipal solid waste. You're going to have this. You're going to have baby diapers, use baby diapers. You're going to have people that are at home sick that have certain bandages and napkins and towelettes and wipes and, and fluids. And what do they do with those? They put them in the trash. So here's the problem. The state knows this. The state dictates what is supposed to happen and requires the city and county of Honolulu to report their f mess. Now, right here, this document here tells you the city and county of Honolulu fills this out, an annual report. And this report now even though the state mandates and tell them under their permit as a condition that they must report the amount of leachate they generate. Well, in this, we asked for 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016 annual reports. And in those reports was not a, nary a single disclosure or report that any leachate was generated. To go further, we contacted the state and asked them, are you sure about this? It is impossible to run a facility such as this and not generate leachate. The state wrote me back and saying that uh, this is in response to your, your records, request and a written follow-up to my phone call. The most recent city and county of Honolulu reports does not indicate any leachate management 
at any of the three transfer stations. We did a phone follow-up, and the city, and they can with the city, and they confirmed that no leachate was generated at those transfer stations. Now that's when things get a little sticky, because you know as usual we file a complaint, and we put our eyes on this site at Kehi Transfer Station, and immediately. Uh, days short there, shortly thereafter that we filed that complaint, the state did absolutely nothing to do any enforcement because they don't have anybody that would go over and enforce the laws because, and they don't, uh, they should have filed legal action against the city in 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, because it was mandated that they report the number of gallons of the volume of materials and leachate that they would generate. They did not do that. So we proceeded to document this and we found that in the dark of night, as we watched and photographed, the city and county of Honolulu, as a courtesy from the state health department, proceeded to operate at night and get rid of a bunch of wastewater and push it down the drain and use absorbent materials and what have you. The wash rack that is, they tell you to pull the truck in does not function properly. They had not, they have created a lake there, as you'll see in some of the photographs. We also were fortunate enough to receive and obtain video of the actual city trucks leaking like sieves, just leaking and running. And some, we've also seen some of the private haulers that we, just to show you, as a convenience, what leachate looks like and when it's running off the trucks and the, that this is a reality. So the question is, why is it that Frank Doyle in the city uh, of Honolulu can admonish private haulers and hold them to a stricter rule, and yet the state turns its back a uh, blind eye to the city's activities. Now on the property at Kehi Transfer Station, the city and county of Honolulu has a drain on this paved area. They instructed the guys, if the truck wash is not available or functioning, then take it and park the truck or the trailer, these long trailers that you see, and park it and put a container under them and collect the leachate. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you, uh, we've gone over to that site and quietly watched, and we've yet to see a single container. What we did see frequently is gallons of liquid pouring from the trucks and onto the ground and just standing there on the ground and drying up and sm smelling and flies and what have you. And then due to the rain that was generated by this type of weather we've had, this weather, this wet weather we've had now, that all drains into the storm drain and goes into the stream which is adjacent. We think that it is the Kehi stream, but it nonetheless it drains into, flows into the Kehi Lagoon area where there's quite a few kayakers and canoe racers that occur. And in fact, if you may have you may have seen that at the time there was high bacteria count, and many of the clubs, the canoe clubs, pull out of the race or threaten to pull out because of bacteria levels, high bacteria levels. Now the state knows, and the city and county knows that this is a reality that this facility, and we're going to go out on a limb here, and I will do it because the city has, if they're not generating any leachate, we know that's a lie, we know that's false representation, and we know that is illegal. And if the state has failed, and upon re receiving those reports from the city claiming that they generated no leachate, then the city is completely fraudulent. The state is completely fraudulent in conspiring to conceal a health threat that is posed, presented by this operation, draining this bacterial, bacterial laden water and chemical laden water called leachate into the storm drain and running off into the environment 
and subsequently making its way to the ocean. And they declare that we have not generated, they being the city and county of Honolulu. Now, you'll see in this video that we have uh, many of the trucks are coming and going and just look at them. Many of them are not washed. What you'll see is many of them will show where leak, leachate has leaked out at some time early on and dried up and caked up on the back of the truck or discolored the truck. So it's a reality. Now, what are the health risks associated with this? We don't know. We're not scientists. We're not doctors. We're not anything other than citizens who can observe these things and become gravely concerned and motivated to look further when a state agency prescribes and orders and states basically as a condition of this permit that you're receiving from us, you must report in gallons the amount of leachate that has been generated by your practice. Now let's just look at some of the potential introduction routes of leachate. You set your trash can outside, and some of us have the old style where they pick it up from the back and it's an empty can and fill the open can. Some of us have uh, containers, plastic containers that we roll out to the sidewalk. On a rainy day, when that truck comes and lift that automated truck, lift that plastic container up, there's water on the body of that and water in it and water and juices and old things that have been discarded. And they pour those into the compacting truck to transport them back to Kehi Transfer Station or directly to H Power of the Landfill. Now, that is just one means of generating the leachate. And to deny and to put it in the condition of a permit, and then when they file the permit, you have no questions. And we've asked the state about this and we've asked the clean water branch and we will be doing another show on this by the way so that we'll so much more to follow up on and you will see that what we've found is that and it's very curious i very suspect why the state health department is not requiring the city and county of honolulu to do biological testing of the water and the wastewater that runs off of that facility. Because they only do the chemical or looking for nitrates or what have you. But if you have those levels, you would know there's bacteria. But if you don't ask and they don't tell, then you can cover it up. And I believe based on what we have found in these records and the lack of records and the lack of reporting that this is can be better described as nothing other than a conspiracy on the part of the city and county of Honolulu and the state of Hawaii solid and hazardous waste branch clean water branch and we make no apologies because when we ask the question what do they do to report this do you require them to test for biological elements or constituents in the water? And the answer was a big no. How can you have such a facility, I'm asking, that would generate this and you know that it's generated and you know it's standing water and you know that you have a truck wash that you spent millions of dollars because it is a, to run that facility it is a condition that you minimize the tracking and depositing of this waste onto the city and state streets and highways. So there's something amiss here, ladies and gentlemen, something terrible. And I can only say to you that the health of the public and the environment is not served. It's not the priority. And what happens then, we'll find ourselves not knowing why we're sick why children are sick? Why someone's asthma acts up? Why Could this be one of the reasons? When you go swimming and the infections that we've seen and the high levels of bacteria triggering uh, horrendous infections and staphs and what have you, and yet 
the city and county of Honolulu and the state health department refused or just wouldn't even do biological testings of the water. While they know that they're generating leachate and they know that this material goes into the ocean through the storm drains and they know that they if they're claiming that they're not hauling it off or sucking it up and properly disposing or taking it to the sewage treatment plant and introducing it there for treatment. Now, if they know that, what you have is an actual cover-up, an inaction to cover up. If you were to inspect and investigate and report and, and take action against the city for failing to report the leachate, instead of just accepting the fact that they have not generated any. Well, it's a terrible thing, folks. Can we tolerate this? So I want you to look at some of the pictures, and we, we took some of the video from the facility at Kehi Transfer Station, as well as uh, on the streets to and from the H-Power. And you will see we one truck was broken down, and it deposited its leachate, a portion of its leachate, in the park there in Y. Kelly. Children will have to play. It was of such concern that they require the, we asked them to the park to make sure that they pressure wash it and clean the area up. And so, I don't know what the answers are, but there's quite a few things to continue to check on, and we'll be getting back to you on this. I'm your host, Carol Cox. Thank you for joining me. And listen to The Carol Cox Show at KWAI 1080 AM on Sunday mornings at 9 to 11. Aloha and thank you.